we have Evelyn Guerrero Morita in the house today, and she's going to be telling us about how she got involved in all these Cheech and Chong movies, um, how she met her late husband, Pat Morita, and um, a lot of other interesting stories. So let's get into that right now. The Natural Habitat Podcast. Recording session has begun. Engage. My name is Mackie B. My name is Unknown. And we are here to bring you the Natural Habitat Podcast. What is the Natural Habitat Podcast, you ask? Well, it's a fucking podcast. It's like, why? How could you not? Un, how could you not get it? Why did you ask that question? It's a crazy, crazy fucking podcast. Futuristic type of podcast. That goes back in time all the time. <laughs> we are from the future <laughs> and the past, all right? And we frequent both places and sometimes even record in the present most frequently. And we're extra high today. We are because there was a, a long <laughs> NHP smoke session that happened this morning. And um, we were going we were gonna to start recording, but we ended up just smoking and smoking. There was some sort of mystic voice at your house that was talking about how he, uh, how he fucked a minion. And it was a very interesting yeah. story. So we got sucked into the, that. <laughs> the shaman. It was my my shaman homie. Yeah, you know. He was like t- telling us all about how he had to sacrifice a minion. Yeah, that's how we Take are. for the team. We got shamans at our house every once in a while. And, uh, you know, you can't you can't judge us for it because we're not judging you. So why you come you come here to judge us? Don't do that. All right. Well, yeah. uh, today we have a very special guest. <coughs> we have... Um, in not not in the studio with us, but via phone call in Las Vegas, we have Evelyn Guerrero Morita, who is a um, actress, model, artist, writer. You might know her as Donna from the Cheech and Chong films. She was in uh, three movies: Next Movie, Nice Dreams, and Things Are Tough All Over. And she also uh, had a role, small role in Star Trek: The Next Generation. For all you nerds out there, she had a. Um, yep. She had a, a lot of roles all over the place. I could list off a few. Um, she was in Dynasty, um, mm-hmm. Alligator 2, The Mutation. The, she was um, in The Facts of Life. Yeah. Um, Star Trek Next Generation as a female ensign. Um, <coughs> Remington Steel, Hill Street Blues, um, all the three movies. Um, Quincy, Emmy, Dallas. So uh, she was in a lot of shit. Yeah, so it's safe to say she has a very extensive career and um besides that, she was also uh married to the late great Pat Morita who played uh Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid and was a uh, was a comedian and had a very interesting story himself. So we uh we got her in the studio when we got to talk about a bunch of that shit and we will get to that in just a second. But before that happens, I have something that I want to talk about, all right? If anybody out there is part of any sort of social media network, then you have seen this young man, a goofy little blonde kid from a a high school in Turlock, California, that took his talent show by storm by reenacting Michael Jackson's Billie Jean and dancing it out (laughs) in the middle of his gym. Did you see this video? Yeah, he was a little stud. Dude, this kid is amazing. He fucking yeah, like he, he he nailed the moonwalk and everything. He he killed it. Yep. And not only did he just freak it for a little bit, he did the whole song and like performed yeah. it and lip synced it all. And yeah. you know, uh, we I I've been trying to dig some of this shit up. I found out that he's from Pittman High School in Turlock, but I don't know his name or anything. But he is uh officially the new dance crew for the Natural Habitat podcast. If you see him out there, <laughs> he's dancing for us. And uh, he's going to be out there promoting the show. So thanks, man. Thank you, bro. We're just going to call you MJ for now. The one that doesn't touch yeah. kids. He's back and he's friendlier than ever. <laughs> yeah, he was a little bit. He was a little badass for sure. That was pretty awesome. Yeah, he was. That's what I woke up to. And it definitely started my day watching this little goofy ass kid because like 
you know, there's a there's a lot of schools, especially when I was a kid. Like if you do that, everyone's gonna make fun of you. Like it wasn't cool to like dance around to Michael Jackson, but the kid had moves, right. and Michael Jackson's a fucking legend. So yeah, you know. All these, all these kids were like clapping along to the beat, and like people were cheering when he did cool shit. So, it was dope. Like it was cool to see everyone accepted it. He won the talent show, and it was like a movie, like Napoleon Dynamite in real life. I'm not saying he's that goofy. Yeah. He wasn't that bad. <laughs> he just had weird hair. No, but he, he was good though. Yeah, he had like the '80s bowl cut or something. I don't know. Yeah, that big but, hair, uh, big hair. He, he, he. It doesn't matter what kind of haircut he had because he had all the moves. Like he did it all. It was like watching Mike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, uh, yeah, since this is such a stoner episode, let's fucking start shit off the right way and let's get into an early NHP smoke sesh. And, um, oh, yeah. I got some special theme music this time <coughs> to set the mood for this special interview today. All right. Well, everybody out there, um, grab your pipes, grab your blunts, your bongs, all this shit should be ready. You should know by now. But if it's not, we'll give you about 10 seconds to break up a little bowl, pack it up, and we'll all smoke together. And this is where we connect all the different times because we recorded this earlier. You listened to it when it came out and somebody else listened to it a week later than that. But we're all going to be together right now smoking weed. So here it is. Lay it on us, Joey. Yep. We have Evelyn Guerrero Morita in the house today and she's going to be telling us about how she got involved in all these Cheech and Chong movies, um, how she met her late husband, Pat Morita. And... um a lot of other interesting stories. So let's get into that right now. The Natural Habitat Podcast. The Natural Habitat Podcast. The recording session has begun. Engage. My name is Mackie Beer. My name is Unknown. And we are here to bring you the Natural Habitat Podcast. What is the Natural Habitat Podcast, you ask? Well, it's a fucking podcast. It's like, why? how could you not, un, how could you not get it? Why did you ask that question? It's crazy, crazy fucking podcast. Futuristic type of podcast that goes back in time all the time <laughs> we are from the future <laughs> and the past all right and we frequent both places and sometimes even record in the present most frequently and we're extra high today we are because there was a, a long <laughs> nhp smoke sesh that happened this morning and um we were gonna we were gonna start recording but we ended up just smoking and smoking there was some sort of mystic voice at your house that was talking about how he uh, how he fucked a minion, and it was a very interesting yeah. story. So we got sucked into the, that. <laughs> the shaman, it was my my shaman homie. Yeah, you know, he's like t telling us all about how he had to sacrifice a minion. Yeah, that's how we Take are for the team. We got shamans at our house every once in a while, and uh, you know, you can't you can't judge us for it because we're not judging you. So why you come you come here to judge us? Don't do that. All right. Well, yeah. uh, today we have a very special guest. <laughs> We have um, in not not in the studio with us, but via phone call in Las Vegas. We have Evelyn Guerrero Morita, who is a um, actress, model, artist, writer. You might know her as Donna from the Cheech and Chong films. She was in uh, three movies: Next Movie, Nice Dreams, and Things Are Tough All Over. And she also uh, had a role, small role in Star Trek: The Next Generation. For all you nerds out there. She had a. Um, yep. She had a, a lot of roles all over the place. I could list off a few. Um, she was in Dynasty, um, mm -hmm. Alligator Two: The Mutation. The, she was um, in The Facts of Life. Yeah. Um, Star Trek: Next Generation as a female ensign. Um, <coughs> Remington Steel, Hill Street Blues, um, all the three movies. Um, Quincy Emmy. Dallas. So uh, she was in a lot of shit. Yeah. So it's safe to say she has a very extensive career. And um, besides that, she was also uh, married to the late great Pat Morita, who played uh, Mr. Miyagi in The Karate Kid. 
and was a was a comedian and had a very interesting story himself. So we uh, we got her in the studio and we got to talk about a bunch of that shit. And we will get to that in just a second. But before that happened, and I found this clip. Nice. Uh, we're going to get to the interview in just a second. But first, I want to uh, talk about, we, we touched on this when we talked to her about uh, how um, they were, Cheech and Chong were kind of before their time. And they didn't know how this was all going to work out. You know, they didn't, they didn't know how big it was going to be. They thought that they, you know, might have all been ruining their careers. And I found this spot where uh, it's right after they run into Donna in the restaurant in Nice Dreams and her and Paul Rubin come in and uh, they go outside and Cheech and Donna are in the car and Donna's all fucked up. I think that she took a Quaalude is what she said. So she takes a Quaalude or she's all hammered or something and fucking they're in the truck and they're like making out and shit and he can't get her like crazy outfit that she has on. She has some like weird eighties outfit and he can't figure out how to take it off. <laughs> and then she like climbs up on his lap and then just passes out and falls over. And then she just like, all like, Hey, I, I got it. You know, I got, I got the top off. It's working now. Like, don't you want to, you know? And then I was watching it and they, uh, he totally pushes a lot of boundaries, especially for the time. I'm going to just play it and let you guys hear it. So this is right after she falls asleep and Cheech is still very excited and horny. <laughs> Come on, baby. Don't you want to be awake for this? Hey, well, what do you want me to do? She's passed out. So he's looking at the camera now. And then he just dives down and gets it. <laughs> Cut to the next scene. Cops are pulling up yeah. to a bouncing. Me and Mikey just had our hands up, by the way. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> and then the truck's bouncing up and down. So he just went ahead and banged her while she was asleep anyway. And, uh, you know, they they can't do that in a movie now. They wouldn't be able to do that no, definitely shit. Definitely not. Everything's too correct now. Yep. So they, they definitely took advantage of it while they had the time. And uh, she was... She played the part perfectly and, you know, she's super hot. She's really funny. And she did like the, like, like the loud, how she would just scream as an answer to everything. Like, how many girls do you know that do that? You know what I mean? Like, girls like that. Girls like Donna. (laughs) There's a lot of girls like Donna. Yeah. So, uh, so Evelyn did it perfectly. And I think that we're going to get into it right now and go ahead and play this interview that we recorded with her. So you want to do that? Yeah, let me put on my Bane mask. That's right. The studio sent this over for the Shelby Chong. I say it every time. Shelby Chong interview. And Joey got it in the mail so that he could change his voice to make our guests sound more comfortable on the phone. So that's what we're doing again. We held on to it. Joey uses it a lot. He loves it because he likes to hide his identity. So he's ready. Just got the ready from Joey. And now here we are. Yeah, I got a dog too, so I understand. Well, that's New Yorkies, and they always want to be part of everything I'm doing. So yeah. yep. shut, shut the fuck up while I'm doing this. <laughs> well, they can <laughs> they can be part of the show. We'll get we'll give them some credit in the description. <laughs> okay, <Yeah. laughs> they'll be happy about that. Evelyn actually, and her team of Yorkies. It's actually one of my, it's actually my dog Donna. I named her after Donna from nice. the movies, of course. She's the most rambunctious and wants to be part of everything, and and she's a lesbian. She she <laughs> she humps her sister all the time. That's funny. That's funny. You know? Oh God, leave it to me. I can't have normal animals. <laughs> yeah, normal so animals are Vegas? no fun. <laughs> what? You live in Vegas? I live in Vegas. Yes. How's <laughs> the weather over there right now? Is it still hot as shit? Right now, no, it's not so hot anymore. It's uh, cooling off. It's only in the 80s. Damn, it's hotter here right now. Yeah, it's cooling down, you know, 80s, 70s. 
Um, How long have you been out there? I've been here over 20 years. Dang. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, originally from Cali. And uh, Pat and I both moved out here about uh, 21, 22 years ago. Uh, yeah, we lived in Hawaii for a while, too. Not bad. Moved oh, but that around. was nice, too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was awesome. so a lot, a lot of people know you as, as Donna from, mm-hmm. mi- from a few Cheech and Chong movies. And, uh, right. I believe you were in, um, Nice Dreams, Next Movie, and Things Are Tough All Over, correct? Correct. So, um, how did you, how did you get into acting? I mean, I'm sure that wasn't your first work. What was it that, uh, that got you into the craft? Okay, this, I, I'm going way back now. Okay, right. I was, <laughs> I come from a, a whole line of dysfunctional gypsy artists, uh, performers, uh, uh, misfits. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, my, my uncle, I was just a kid, okay, I was just a little kid at the time, and my uncle, who was about 19, um, married Sally Marr, who is Lenny Bruce's mother. Wow. Okay. Follow me? Okay. That's quite, yeah. quite the connection. He, he, yeah. He was only 19 and she was 49. Well, it was like a 30 year difference in age when they got married. Well, love knows no bounds, right? Huh? Love knows no bounds. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. It was, it was, it was a Harold and Maude story. Honest to God. And, um, anyway, she, Sally at the time was, she was, she was a vaudeville, vaudevillian. She did, she had a vaudeville act. Yeah. And then, okay. and later when her group split up, she decided to become a manager. So she, she managed, uh, Lenny Bruce's, uh, career, her son. And then she started getting a staple of, of other performers, you know, like strippers and jugglers yeah. and comics and, and people like that. And so when she, uh, married my uncle, my uncle was always an aspiring writer and everything. And, um, she, she got him in contact with Cheech and Chung. Uh-huh. Early, we're talking early, early days when Cheech and Chong first moved out here, moved out to LA from uh, Vancouver. All right, okay. We're, go- we're going way back. Okay, when they were doing the, they haven't even done the party party albums yet or anything. Oh man! And yeah, so Sally was trying to help them out, and um, that's when I first met met those guys. But but I wasn't involved uh, theatrically for a while until you know years later, and and that's how I met Pat, my husband, my future husband, Pat Marita. Awesome. Yeah. So because that, Sally was also managing his career as a stand-up comic. Yeah, that's right. And um, I I actually um, I didn't know that uh, that Pat was a stand-up comedian. I was I was ignorant to the fact I looked it up before we did this show and I knew him from his acting and you know his serious roles and stuff like that and right. mm-hmm. I I opened up a whole a whole slew of stuff that I didn't even know about and um mm-hmm. he was a he, he was a very inspirational man that's for sure and just to know that he had such a funny side is is a uh, is very refreshing to know I was watching interviews with him this morning and I was smiling ear to ear the whole time so uh... <laughs> You know, he, yeah, he, he's, he's got a fascinating story in itself. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm in the process of writing his bio. Um, That's awesome. yeah, he, he, when he was, when he was from the, I, I think the first nine years of his life, he was, he was, uh, diagnosed with spinal tuberculosis and he was told that he would never walk again. Yeah. And so he spent, like, from the age of three, I think, till he was 12, and in a sanitarium, away from his family, away from away from the Japanese culture, and he, and the sanitarium was run by by a priest and nuns, and they gave him the name Patrick. All right. Uh, a name after Saint Patrick. Yeah. And because his real name, his birth name is Noriyuki. 
Anyway, to make a long story short, they said he would never walk again and he would spend a life as a cripple. And one day the Shriners, that bless them, came along and said, uh, you know, we have this, um, this, this surgery we could try to perform. It's the 50-50 chance you'll walk again, but there's a, you know, 50 chance you won't. So they had nothing to lose. They went ahead with the surgery and lo and behold, it worked. Um, he was able to walk again, but now when they when he they released him from the sanitarium, he went from one prison to another because by then the war broke out and all the Japanese were in were in uh, internment wow. camps. That's right. So when he got released from the sanitarium, he he was picked up by the FBI and and sent to the uh, internment camp where his family was. Man, that's so crazy. Yeah, and. And he was always an outcast, you know. Nobody accepted him. His family didn't even accept him because he didn't uh, he didn't uh, speak a word of Japanese. Uh-huh. And then, when, and then when he became a, a teenager, he was rebellious and he didn't want to get a regular job. And 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 he said, "I want to be a comic." So he used to hang out at little local joints, you know, little local uh, bars and stuff, you know, and you could get up on Saturday nights and tell a joke. And that's where it started. And then um, he really didn't get into a career, per se, until he was like in his 40s, I think, early 40s. Uh-huh. Yeah. When did you guys get together? And that's when Sally picked him up. That's when Sally met him and gave him the name, the hip nip. (laughs) (laughs) He said, he said, Sally, he says, I know I'm not that funny. And nobody thinks Japanese are funny. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. She says, shut up. She says, you're going to be funny because you're, you're unique. There's nobody like you. You don't have to be that funny. You're just different. And yeah, I'm right. gonna, yeah, you're going to be the first hip nip. <laughs> you know what? She she was smart and uh, right on time because he was amazing. She was so ahead of her time, and she she yeah. could yeah she could see talent when you you know when it when she saw it, and she was just amazing that way, you know. And she got my mother in, involved and my, me involved. She could, she made us all crazy, the whole family. <laughs> <laughs> um. She, my mom, she, my mom was a, wanted to be a professional dancer. Yeah. And, and, um, Sally said, why don't you become a burlesque dancer? They make a lot of money. And we're talking yeah. about the late, late fifties. Okay. Yeah. So, and that was a huge thing. Yeah. And I mean, my mom worked with the greatest of the great burlesque queens like, uh, Tempest Storm and Lily St. Wow. Cyr. And she was making awesome. like five. Yeah, she was banking. She she was making about five thousand a week. <laughs> wow! And at that time, that's that's insane. It's a fortune. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 the ironic thing is, um, uh, Pat opened up for her a couple of times in some gigs. Wow! And in, in a couple of those clubs, yeah. So that's how I met. That's how I met Pat, you know. Cause so, it's a small world how every everything is connected like that. Yeah. And, it, yeah, if anyone had told me I was going to end up marrying Pat years later, I'd say, you're out of your fucking mind. <laughs> Uncle Pat? <laughs> <laughs> right? But you just never know. Things just happen yeah. the way they happen, you know. Because I knew him as Uncle Pat, man. I said, no, I'm going to marry right. Uncle Pat. But uh, yeah, it's just so funny how it came full circle, you yeah. know. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So how um yeah. so how was it that you ended up getting into your first Cheech and Chong movie? Okay, um that was just a fluke. Um <laughs> my well my 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 uncle Tony who I mentioned before Tony Buscara, uh who married Sally. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He he met Cheech and Chong. He was doing some writing for them. Uh and. Uh, this is after they had already done Up in Smoke. Yeah. Work. So this was their yeah. okay. this was their second movie, correct? No, Up in Smoke was Up the first. Up in Smoke movie. was the first. Yeah. Was the first. Yeah. 
Okay, so now they were they were thinking of ideas, you know, to, and Tony was helping them write the, the next movie, uh, appropriately called The Next Movie. <laughs> right. <laughs> Good title. Yeah, so smart. You know why? Because they couldn't come up with a fucking title. I said, Jesus right. Christ, could you come up with something better than Next Movie? <laughs> it's, the, it's the easiest thing for the demographic to remember. All the stoners yeah, remember it. Definitely did. Yeah. They just didn't come up with another title. So anyway, um, <laughs> when it came time for casting, they wanted to cast a girl that would be kind of like their uh, sidekick girlfriend. Uh, she had to be funny. She had to be good at improvisation. And they looked at a, hundreds of girls, you know, for the part. And my uncle said, you know, at the time I was starting to do little things, you know, episodics, um, on TV, like Beretta and Hill Street Blues and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, I was just starting off my career, you know, but I wanted to be a dramatic character actress. Um, but I always wanted to do comedy, you know, too. So anyway, my uncle mentioned it to, to Cheech and Chong. He said, hey, by the way, my I have a niece who, who's an actress. Um, why don't you have a look at her, you know? Uh, she just might be right for the part. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, because, uh, so, so Tony tells me, he says, yeah, I want you to go in there and read for, for Cheech and Chong. And I said, oh, man, I, read? Uh, he says, well, just meet them. Just talk to them. And he says, and I want you, what I want you to do is, he says, when you go in there, he says, I want you to tell them the story about these cholas that you read into. <laughs> <laughs> No, this was, this was a true story. I was. Uh, yeah, do you remember um, it? How does it go? I was I was in a, I was living with my grandparents at the time, and they lived in. That's another misconception. I didn't live in East LA. I I grew up in uh, uh, Silver Lake area, but I okay. went. But the, but the schools I went to were all you know uh, Chicanos and. That whole cholo mentality was there. Yeah. So, right. no, so I was very familiar with it, you know. Um, so I'm walking down the street, and and uh, um, these uh, this family is coming towards me, and they're passing me, and I can hear their whole conversation, and the and the teenage girl is saying, "Jimmy and Johnny got into a fight, and I had to take away the knife." <laughs> <laughs> They almost killed me, son, and he, he's, and his eyeball popped out, and I didn't know what to do, and I had to call the police. And, <laughs> and I never forgot that. But wow. Tony said, he said, Tony, Tony said, my uncle said, you got to go in there and tell Cheech and Chung that story. Yeah. Because I think that's what they're looking for. They're looking for yeah, that chick. It, it you sounds know? like a cheap story. Yeah. So, so I went in and I met them and, uh, I told them the story and the next thing I know, Tommy looks at Chi Chi and says, I think we found Donna. Nice. <laughs> that's so cool. He says, I think we found Donna. That's Donna. That's, that's who, that's who we need. That's who we want. And, so, uh, so at I was that time, afraid. do you think like, do you think you noticed like how epic it was? Or like how epic it was gonna be because that those movies turned into like cult classics to where new generations are discovering them every day. Young kids, oh. high school kids are still discovering Cheech and Chong movies and discovering you and Shelby oh. and Tommy and Cheech and everybody. You know, and people are seeing these things and and, yeah. and it's it's something bigger than life to them. You know, so it's like, did it feel like that at that time or no, not at all, not at all. <laughs> I had we, I was clu we were all clueless that it would it would ever come to this you know yeah that it would become a uh, pop culture thing you know um, yeah. it, it in fact if anything I was a little scared because the subject matter was you know uh, ahead of its time yeah it was it was it was strong and it, we weren't sure the public was going to be be ready for it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely risky. Yeah, it was very risky. And, um, and you know, the studios were, were a little hesitant, too, you know, putting that 
putting that out. But um, in fact, it, it kind of it kind of affected me um, after I did the second film that, uh, with them, Nice Dreams. I didn't work for about a, a year because, because uh, of like well, the... because, well, at the time, at the time, there were a couple of. Uh, Hispanic uh, organizations that were in an uproar that there wasn't enough uh, uh, positive images of Hispanics on the screen yeah. and there weren't enough parts and blah, blah, blah. And I got a lot of flack for it because they kept saying, how can you, how can you portray uh, Latinos that way and condone uh drug use and I said Jesus Christ we're not condoning anything we're not condoning that behavior we're simply making fun of it yeah yeah it's satire you know? there's a difference it's a satire you know we're making fun of the fact you know look look at this look how crazy people behave sometimes yeah you, you know, know what's funny about that is like everything has come full circle again now look at how look at how messed up and everything is politically correct today you know right like, every, every no Nobody can take a joke anymore, and it seems like you guys had your own experience with that at that time. I know, I know. It's just uh, so crazy, you know. Um, so, but I, I, you know, I, today I'm to this day I'm just amazed that you know we have such a following, you know. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. I yeah. I've been a fan since high school. And I'm from the from like the next generation, you know. We're from the '80s, right? So I know, um, I know. Growing up in like the mid '80s, and then um, early '90s, and then and then finding the Cheech and Chong um, whole franchise in the '90s, even you know, it's, it's it's pretty pretty crazy, and it's still going today. So I mean, it's it's amazing what um, what you guys did and what it turned out into. Yeah, my. Uh -oh. My yeah, it really is. It's, it's, fun. it's just like it's like past movies too. You know, when they when they did the first Karate yeah. Kid, nobody thought that little movie was going to do anything. Yeah, you know, oh, and it's still just as big now as it ever was too. Even with the remakes, I mean, the originals yeah. are still still just as popular. Yeah, yeah. So you know, no, I'm I'm real proud to be part of that uh, pop culture. Um, but no, we had no idea at the time. That we were doing it. <laughs> so <laughs> no what, idea. What what was the we vibe like it, there? Was it like we a? Thought it was, we thought it was death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we it, well, there goes our career. <laughs> right, right. But yeah. thank thank goodness you guys did it. You know because yeah. you guys helped change things for everybody. You know, I think um, so. you yeah. helped people loosen up and and helped people warm up to. Um, bringing mm -hmm. marijuana into pop culture and mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of those things, a lot of those things that were um, not really issues before then, you guys turned yeah. into issues and, and created a, a whole platform for people to um, be more accepting of those things. Well, yeah, we, we were just so ahead of our time, you know. Uh, I always said I, we were like the... Uh, the Lenny Bruce's of the of the cannabis culture. <laughs> right. That's yeah. awesome. You guys really because, are. Because Lenny Bruce, you know, he opened up the door to uh, freedom of speech and, you know, yeah. Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy can say the word fuck, you know, anytime they wanted to, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so Lenny was the sacrificial lamb, you know. Yeah. And that's what that's what, that's what killed him. Absolutely, and he he still gets respect for it today. His name's still brought up all the time. I hear it. Yeah, yeah, so true. Especially so from comedians, from all the comedians, they all respect all the ones who came before them. So it's like everybody holds loyalty to these these key people. And um, Lenny Bruce was big, and um, Richard Pryor was ginormous. You know, Shelby said the same thing. Like her favorite were the black comedians as well because of that same reason. You know, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we get it. Yep. So Red I, Fox. Yeah. I have a uh, yeah, Red Fox. Yeah. <laughs> I have a question that uh that I definitely wanted to ask. I've been itching to ask it since we uh since we found out we were gonna do this and we started talking with you. Um uh -huh. I I personally am an advocate of psychedelics and I understand mm -hmm. that you had a experience with acid and Timothy Leary, is that correct? 
Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I'd love to hear that story. <laughs> um, I'll tell you as much as I can remember. <laughs> Understood. Understood. I, I have an occasional flashback, you know, uh-huh. <laughs> of, of that time. Um, what happened was when we were shooting, I think it was next movie. Is that the one he was in? Yeah. Yeah, when he, he had the cameo as the doctor? Yeah, he was the doctor of the crazy people in the crazy house where uh-huh. Pee-wee, where Pee-wee escaped. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, okay. No, no, wait a minute. That was that was nice dreams. Was it? I, was it? I think it was, yeah, because... Um, so this is what happens is we all get high and watch these movies and then they all string yeah. together. <laughs> I know, they kind of gel together. No, I think it was a nice dream. Um, because, because you remember the, the Chinese restaurant scene when I first walk in with Pee Wee Herman and I, I fall in the, in the chi- Chinese, uh, dish, uh, the sukiyaki that, uh, Cheech is eating. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. I, okay, yeah. I recognize Cheech. Okay. Well, ha- that was nice. To that's right. It was. That was, a, that was an accident, by the way. A lot, a lot <laughs> really? of those, yeah. A lot of those scenes were improvised. Man, a lot of the best. Yeah, in, oh, this, improv seems like it always feels like so difficult. Yeah. I mean, and Tommy Chung was directing, and this was his idea of directing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donna. <laughs> uh, okay, <she's> Donna. Awesome. <laughs> okay, Donna. Okay, this is what we're going to do. <laughs> he said, you're gonna, awesome. Okay, you're going to come into the restaurant with Pee Wee, and then you're going to recognize Cheech, and. Take it from there. Okay, action. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds that sounds about the same way that we run our show, so Yeah. I don't blame them for it. Very like that. They seem like so much fun to work with, was it? Oh my god, we had a blast. We had a blast. Okay. They gave us so much creative freedom. You know, and they just trusted that we were going to do the right thing. Because I I had a background in in improvisation. And if you notice, a lot of the actors that they they cast uh, were came out of, you know, improv. Uh, And and that's what made it work, because a lot of those little accidents and a lot of those little surprises were the were the things they kept. Yeah. Yeah. That's the gold was very spontaneous, you know, um, and it worked, you know, it made some of the funniest scenes. But anyway, getting back to Timothy Leary. All, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> so you met, um, so did you meet him at the shooting? I met him. Yeah. During the shoot. Um, uh, we were both, uh, working one day. I think it was a Friday. Yeah. It was, a, <laughs> I had to be a Friday because I needed Saturday and Sunday to recuperate. Right. Um, <laughs> um, we met and um, we both wrapped around the same time. And he came to my trailer and he said, um, first of all, I was in awe that, to meet him, you know, because I was always a big right, fan and, and read all his books and used to yeah. go to his lectures. And anyway, um, he came to my trailer and he was real friendly and he had a bottle of wine and he said, Hey, he says, you want to hang out for a little while? And I said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy Leary's asking me to hang out. Hell yeah. Yeah. Why so, not? <laughs> so, um, but you know, I didn't have any aspirations, sexual aspirations or, or anything like that. And I don't think he did either. I think he just wanted to, wanted some company, you yeah. know. He seemed like a genuine person. He was. He really was. He is a very sweet, sweet guy. Um, so anyway, um, we go to my place, and but as I'm driving, um, he pulls out this little piece of paper, and it's got a bunch of blotter acid on it. Uh-huh. And he said, uh, I'm going to take one now if you don't mind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he had that laugh. <laughs> All cynical. <laughs> yeah. He said, you don't mind if I take one now, do you? <laughs> he says, I want, it, I, want, he says, I want it to hit me by the time we get to your place. And I said, sure, why not? In fact, I'll take one. So, big mistake. <laughs> had you ever done it before that? 
oh yeah, oh god, yeah, I've done a lot of acid <laughs> before, <laughs> but 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 I didn't realize his acid was yeah. going to be so potent. So not, potent. not Timothy Leary's yeah. acid. <laughs> so, so I took the equivalent. That, I took the equivalent that he took, and it hit. And it hit me before I even got to my house. I couldn't even park my wow. car. Man, I couldn't even park my car. I saw my car as a big dragon, and I couldn't. <laughs> 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 wow! I could barely walk upstairs, and then. Oh God! And then we got inside, and and he was telling me stories, and I don't know. He he was going to the cosmos and the universe, and yeah, you know, man. I, yeah, man. He took me on a journey. I, I didn't think I'm I was definitely come envious of that. I mean, imagine being able to just. I mean, I'm sure you got to hear some cool stuff. That's, oh, that's I did. Like this uh, understatement. And 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 acid just made me kind of I, I understood everything he was talking about. Yeah, you know, I yeah. he, he, he took me there. You know, um, that's awesome. Oh hell, I I kissed God and <laughs> he's like a sh- like a shaman basically. Yeah, he's like a modern day shaman. Exactly. He was. He was exactly. He was very much so. And um, man, what so, an awesome guy. Well, the evening, the evening started off really incredible. I mean, we laughed, we laughed our asses off, we 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 talked about all kinds of things, and then all of a sudden, um, I had this huge stuffed bear, it's like a life size bear, the size of a, of a grizzly. A, uh, a a director gave it to me. He came out. It came out of an, a museum. Um, nice. anyway, a director friend of mine gave it to me and it was sitting in the corner of the room and all of a sudden that fucking bear, bear came to life. Oh. And, I, <laughs> and, oh, I'm no. and I'm telling Timothy, did you see the bear move just now? And he says, no, <laughs> I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I said, it's coming to life. I said, I think maybe there's a spirit inside it. No, there's no spirit, baby. Just enjoy the high. <laughs> That's so funny. Now, now, now he's laughing like that, mm-hmm. and I see him. I see him as the devil. And, wow. <laughs> and, I, and I'm freaking out. I'm going. Stop laughing like that. It's very sinister. It's scary, me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's <laughs> Yeah, and so he he just you know he just gave me a kiss and said, "Well, I think I better go." And he ordered a taxi and left. <laughs> <laughs> just left you there with that bear that may or may not be alive. <laughs> he, 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 I don't know what. I guess I I guess I ruined the night by the, by mentioning the bear, but <laughs> you know, and, and calling him the devil yeah. wasn't exactly the right. Thing. <laughs> Probably he might have seen the yeah, bear that's move too. The ticket. Yeah. But I saw him shortly after that, and you know he, you know he said, oh, I, "I apologize," and he said, "Oh my God, don't worry." He says, "Honey, please." <laughs> you were sipping and you were having a good time, weren't you? And I said, "Yeah." <laughs> yeah, yep. that's awesome. Only Tim, yeah, was- only Timothy Leary can take you from kissing God one minute to looking at the devil the next. Oh my yeah. honey, I'm telling you, I went to heaven and earth and hell <laughs> I- <laughs> several times. In, in, in a period of what I don't know, tw- uh, twenty four hours, it, it was just—I'll uh, never forget it as long as mm-hmm. I live. See, and that's what yeah. uh, you know. I feel bad for for my generation because the the real compound of LSD is gone and forgotten. People just try to recreate it now, and especially Timothy Leary's LSD, even more potent. Oh. So, um, yeah. you know, they'll, they'll never be able to experience it like, like it yeah. truly was, you know, we can't go buy real LSD or go buy Quaaludes no. anymore. All that's gone. No, no, you can't, you can't, you certainly can't get it from Timmy Leary anymore. That's for sure. <laughs> no. <Nope>. And I think, <laughs> I, I think, doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> no, nope. I think no, that I acid don't. and acid and mushrooms really, you know, helps open your mind, helps you look at the world differently and makes you a more mm-hmm. friendly and humble person, you know, helps oh, you, absolutely. helps you absolutely. coexist Definitely. with everyone. 
It's definitely oh. something you have to do at least once in your life. If you don't, you're going to regret it. You know, mm-hmm. like, oh, I try to tell everybody that. Oh, yeah. Well, m- mushrooms, you know, have been used by the Native American Indians for centuries. Yeah. You know? And it's no wonder why. They're su- such a powerful thing, and it creates such a loving feeling. Like, really, even mm-hmm. if you have a bad trip, there's still points where you, you feel connected to things, you know, no matter oh, what. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, it changed my life. It really did. You know. So um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very um, inspirational. So, um, I want to do a uh, move on to. I was reading somewhere that uh, you are a collector of art and antiques. Is that correct? Yes. How Where did lo- you read that? Oh, well, I. Oh. You know, I d- I do my sleuthing. <laughs> I I got to find out some things about you. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that was out there. How interesting. How uh, yes. how, how long have you been keeping a uh, keeping a collection? I've been collecting all my adult life. Um, I kind of got the bug from my father. My father was an avid, uh, art collector Uh and antique collector. And, um, I don't know. I just always had a love for it. I, I traveled the world and everywhere I went, I always went into antique stores and went antiquing and, um, man, that's awesome. uh, Yeah. Right now I'm, I'm, I go through phases. Um, I was collecting uh, snuff boxes for a while. Not Coke boxes, okay? Snuff boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get them mixed up. <laughs> Those are antique boxes that gentlemen used to put snuff in, uh-huh. which is a, a, it's a powder form of tobacco, you know? But, yeah. um, but the snuff boxes are interesting because they come in all kinds of shapes and forms and um, so I started with that and then I started collecting porcelain, uh, pieces and music boxes and now I'm into automatons which are antique uh dolls uh that move. Oh. They okay. they have move they're animated. They're animated. Yeah. That sounds um, that sounds kind of scary if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> well, uh, well, you know that's funny you should say that because I have two nephews that are afraid of my dolls. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like the little monkey that plays the drum or whatever and like things like that? No, well, they're not that spooky. Some of them are are, are really beautiful French uh, lady dolls. And one is, you know, dabbing her nose with a hanky and looking in the mirror. Uh-huh. Okay. But, but the, the, scary, the scariest one I have is a Charlie Chaplin doll. Now, that's an interesting wow. story there. Um, I'm also clairvoyant and I speak to the dead. Um, I know. No, I I'm no. I, I actually I, I heard I heard that too and I am a I am a firm believer in in you know the abilities of people to contact other realms and you know whether it be different dimensions I'm not sure what it is but I'm open to to everything. Well, I, I it, I've always been clairvoyant. Um my mother had it, my grandmother had it. Um but recently, only recently in the last couple of day, years, I mean um, I've been picking up on uh, people that have passed. Uh-huh. Uh, mostly, well, actually, I take that back. I've been able to communicate with with Pat, my mother, um, certainly certain family members, but but only in the past two years I've been uh, connecting with um, uh, friends who who have loved ones that passed. Uh-huh. Okay. And I'll make this story really short, but um, the most prominent one, well, actually, there's two that are pretty prominent, but it has to do with that automaton I mentioned, the Charlie Chaplin doll. Uh-huh. Um, this one, uh, these two friends I know, they lost their son very early on. He died of an overdose at, at uh, 19, mm-hmm. and they always suspected it was a suicide. Um. I got the feeling that it wasn't. I got the feeling it was accidental because he had just gotten off probation. He had been clean. And then when he got off probation, he went back to using and, and, um, he, too started, much. he did too much. Right. Yeah. Right. Which is very common. It happens all the time when they get clean yeah. and then they start using again, they OD. Yeah. Cause you don't, can't you don't have a tolerance anymore. So exactly. Exactly. Okay. So, he came to me in a vision 
I, I, kind of a dream state. And he said to me, please tell my parents I did not commit suicide. It was a stupid mistake. And wow, I'm so, and I'm so, so sorry. And I said, well, you're going to have to give me a sign because <laughs> they're not going to believe me. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the next day I, uh, um, I think a week after that, I went to this uh, antique show, and I saw the Charlie Chaplin doll, okay? Mm-hmm. And, and I bid on it, and I won it. I, went, I won the doll, and I took it home, and I was pissed off because as soon as I took it home, it stopped working. Oh. Wow. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't working, okay? Uh-huh. So, but, but oh, okay, let me, let me go back. When I was at the auction, I heard a little voice telling me, get the doll, get the doll, get the doll, yeah. get the doll. I'm like, what is that? So something, you know? was, something was drawing you towards it right away. Something was telling me to get the doll. So I get the doll, I bring it home, it doesn't work, now I'm pissed. So then I realized that little voice that I heard earlier was the spirit of their son telling me to get this doll. And I said, okay. You're telling me to get this doll. Now I brought it home. Now it's not working. Okay, you better make it work. Right. Because <laughs> I'm pissed, okay? <laughs> so a little boy said to me, shake the box. And I shook the box. Sure enough, the damn thing started working. Wow. And it's been working since. Okay, so now I tell his, I tell his parents the story. And they said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Do you know that my son, his biggest, he was such a big fan of Charlie Chaplin. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. He loved that's Charlie true. Chaplin movies, Charlie Chaplin pictures, anything, anything to do with Charlie Chaplin. And I know for a fact, she said, I know for a fact that he was the one that told you to bring that doll home because he was going to prove to you, he was going to give you a sign uh-huh. that that was, you know. That's pretty awesome. I told yeah, a true story. Another story I'll tell you very quickly. Um, my girlfriend, my best friend in the whole world, Robin, her sister died, and um, I went into the room before they were gonna they were gonna pull the plug. She was on life support, and when I went in, I saw a cloud of uh, like a like a cloud over her head, yeah. and I I knew that was the spirit of her father and her grandmother taking her home. Um, yeah, that seems to be like a common experience too. Like a lot of people okay. see that, like a mist type of thing. Yeah. Well, right after that, um, her other sister took a picture, and it showed up in the picture. Those clouds wow. that I saw showed up in the picture. I have actual proof that 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 was there. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's just a gift. I don't know. And uh, you know, I don't look for it. It just comes to me and. And th- that's probably why, because you're accepting of it, you know what I mean? Like, that seems to be the theme yeah. of people who experience things like that, is that they're yeah. just open to those type of experiences. Yeah, yeah. Because we all have it, to some degree, really. Uh-huh. But, I believe it. But 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 we don't tune into it because there's so much noise in the, in the world. Um, yeah, and, especially and, nowadays. So many distractions, you know, with the yeah. internet. And, you know, and it's just yep. uh, that's why that's why I meditate. That's why I meditate so I can get to that altered state. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's really. Yeah, a I feel gift. like um, <laughs> that's like. I think our meditation is uh, our smoking. Basically, like we get to kind of tune out when we get really stoned. Like we'll smoke together before we sure. do the shows, and we smoke together during the shows, and all that kind of like is like a form for us, I guess. Of yeah, our sure. young mind sure. way of meditating because it does like really block everything out. It does allow it is, us to kind of like, focus. You're right. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Hey, listen, whatever works, whatever yeah. works. Why? Yeah. Whatever frees your mind. That's right. <laughs> exactly. You got it. You got it. So, um, you, uh, you have some things coming up next month on October 3rd at Hempfest in Vegas. Yes. You're yes. going to be there with a uh, a crew called Nevada Naturals that makes greenhouse equipment and they make plastic out of hemp oil? Yes. That yes. sounds that sounds interesting. Tell us I about these guys. So, well, 
um, this is my friend Robin's uh, husband's company. Um, he's a builder. He's been, you know, God, he's built just about everything in this town. Um, <laughs> and, and he's just started a new, a new business, a new line of business. Uh, creating um, biodegradable, um, earth-friendly equipment for greenhouses for growing the cannabis. Uh-huh. And yeah, and he's developed recently. Um, it's like a plastic material, but it's biodegradable, um, and, and it's made out of hemp oil. Don't ask me how they did it, but that's what it's made out of. And it's like a hard substance. So you can make all kinds of things out of it. You can make water bottles. You can make, you know, Mm -hmm. all all kinds of things, you know, that that, uh, when you throw it away, it's not going to contaminate the earth. Yeah, leave a giant uh, island of plastic in the ocean. (laughs) Yes, yes. So I'm really excited about that. And and I told him, I said, hey, if I can do anything to kind of – bring attention to your booth during the, the festival, I'd be happy to. And he said, oh, man, he said, if you can come and sign autographs. Because Tommy's going to be there. Uh-huh. That's awesome. He's, yeah, he's going to be making an appearance. I'm not sure if he's going to have a booth because I know he promotes, he has his, his new line of um, paraphernalia, like uh, the Futurola. Have you ever heard of his company? Yeah. Yeah, Futurola. He's got the little rolling machines and yeah, stuff like that. He's got, all kinds of, he's got all kinds of cool stuff going on right now, actually. I just saw a cool commercial for him the other day, also. Mm hmm. So, uh, but I know, but Paris, I just I just heard from Paris' his son, and he mm-hmm. was telling me that uh, he's going to make an appearance and he's getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> Dang, that's awesome. Yeah, he deserves it. Yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what Lifetime is achievement for being a stoner. <laughs> for being a the, the longest living stoner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. All, we all hope to be one day. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, and um, Shel- Shelby's a doll too. I, I adore Shelby. Yes. I want to get her on dancing. I want to get her on Dancing with the Stars. Yep, we're gonna do yeah, it. We're we getting her on do. there. Oh yeah. man, she's such a good dancer. I've seen her dance on uh, when she was doing her gig with Tommy when they when they weren't you know when it was just the two of them. Yeah, yeah, she did a little, they did a little dance routine, a little salsa, and man, that girl's got wheels. Yeah. Well, she, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully everybody listening will um, want to help her out too, and and um, make sure that we uh, start that campaign for her and and get everybody to sign a petition or whatever she does to get her going to get her on the show. Yep. Once, she, once she gets it going, yeah. we're going to be helping her out full force. So. Oh, well, let me know because I want to, you know, lend my support in any way. Yeah, you definitely. Know? Yeah. yeah. She was a, she, she was a sweetheart, man. She was so nice when we, when we did the interview with her and, uh, you know, she, she followed up with us. She, um, was just yeah. an all around great person, and also her publicist yeah. Melanie was awesome too. She helped set everything up. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I I heard that that podcast, and she was she, you know, that's how she is. She's always been that way. She's, she's a beautiful person inside and out. Yeah. And I, she really she, seems like it. Well, I think I think you all, yeah. I think all of you guys are in this circle. It's just Honestly, uh, yeah. positive, you know, beautiful people. So. You know, you you oh, took you okay. took an hour out of your day to come and talk with us, and we really, really do appreciate it. You know, it's an honor. Oh, it's an honor to have you. It's my pressure. I mean, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> little bit of both. Little bit of both. It's my blood pressure. Um, before we get out of here, I wanted to ask about Star Trek for all the nerds out there. Weren't you on Star Trek? Oh yes, yes, I was on Star Trek: The Next Generation. Yeah, I was uh, scoping through some pictures online, and I saw you in the uniform, and I just wanted to say, like, we, we're we into a lot of that. We're big Star Trek and Star Wars fans, and um, uh-huh. I'm sure everybody, like, all of our fans are too, so um, I just wanted to throw that out there and yeah. let everybody know. I don't know what Joey's. I don't know what Joey's talking about because there's only there's either Star Trek fans or there's Star Wars fans. You can't be both. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, this, this was Star Trek, The Next Generation. It was the, the not the original series. It was the one that came after. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I was just in a couple of episodes of that. I was a semi-regular. I played an ensign. And, uh, yeah, I get a lot of, a, a lot of, uh, Trekkies. Yeah. Uh, That's why I wanted to bring it up, because it's a huge thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Um... That's another thing that's, uh, who knew that was going to take off like it did? Yeah. Yeah. There's it's just, uh, amazing. Yeah. You've been, uh, yep. you, you've been a part of a lot of great things and I feel like we didn't even touch on a lot of it. We're going to need to get you on here again sometime. Oh, yeah, it'd definitely. be my pleasure, honey. Oh, that's an honor. It's such an honor for me and it would be my pleasure. Well, uh, well, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for the hours and hours of entertainment over the years. And thank you. um thanks for taking the time out to to come sit and chat with us. Yeah, before uh, Yeah, go ahead, honey. But before you go, do you have um it's October 3rd. Is it just the 3rd or is it the whole weekend that Hemfest is? And do you know what no, time the the booth will be uh, you'll be there? The 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 ham fest I believe is only one day. It's Saturday, October third. Um, I believe it starts at. I'm not sure what time it starts, but it's supposed to go on in the evening until about nine. Uh huh. Uh, you can Google it and find out the exact details. I will be there for the duration of the whole show. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. Because I'm I'm with, I'm with my friends and their booth, and I'm I'm sure they're going to want to stay there for the whole duration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so just look for the the booth that says Nevada Naturals. And it'll be at the Las Vegas Convention Center. At the Las Vegas Convention Center, correct. Yep. So if you're uh, if you're out in the Vegas area, make sure that you go catch Hemp Fest and um, get an autograph from Evelyn and take a picture with her and tag us. Uh, on the podcast, and you will win a fresh prize. So uh, get, your awesome. ass, get your ass down to Hemp Fest, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to be a, it's a big deal. It's, I mean, it's uh, booths and booths of booths of uh, innovative uh, inventions and creations, and there's going to be artisans, and uh, I think there's a carnival, uh, and, 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 and awesome music, a lot of entertainment. Nice. Yeah, looks like Westside Connection is going to be there, Cottonmouth Kings, Wu-Tang Clan mm -hmm. members. So not the whole Wu-Tang nice. Clan, just members of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a good day. Yeah. Uh, right. Hope to see you guys. Hope to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to try to make it. <laughs> All right, well, thank, thanks again for joining us, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. My pleasure. All right, have a great day. Okay, you too. Peace. Peace. Right. All right. Well, there you go. I don't think that uh, I don't think that could have gone any better. That was fucking amazing. Yeah, she's really awesome. Yeah, I'm what a super crazy life. Of like, yeah, you know what I mean. Like, I feel like I always really felt like the '60s and the '70s were probably like the best era to have ever lived in. Yeah. Until now, you know, like now I feel like maybe now is the might be the best era ever, and we just don't realize it yet because the internet is like. The most amazing thing ever made. Yeah, that's true. You know, like I, I fall in love with it more and more every day. So it's like I know it. it's pretty crazy. But but pre-internet era, I would think that the '60s and the '70s were probably the coolest time. Yeah, because I agree. Things were things were so much more wild. Things were so much more different and out in the open. And you didn't have to hide like a criminal to do anything that you wanted to do. Everything was like right there you know what yeah. i mean you could clearly express yourself however you wanted to and you you know what i mean like you could just do you were you were just free to do what you wanted to do and they did it and set trends for the rest of time yeah i agree and uh i think that it was just a time when you know everyone was free everyone it was all like free and love and a change in you know in the world and like in america especially and I think that uh, people could just be themselves, so there was no need to pretend to be someone else and then, you know, have someone find out that you're really, you know, fucking, you know, there's there's people that you meet, say you meet someone at work, and they're just like, oh, yeah, whatever, blah, 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 I'm just this normal guy, and then you find out that 
they do coke all the time, like on their free time. And then you're like, wow, I never knew that so-and-so was a cokehead. But if you could just meet that guy and they were like, hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm so-and-so. I like to do coke. Then you would just be like, oh, okay. And then that would be that person. And you would know them for who they are. <laughs> and it wouldn't be, you know, that applies for a lot of things. So if you're free yeah. to walk up to people and say, I'm so-and-so, this is what I'm about and this is what I like, then people can accept you for that. And then uh, I think that it makes it a lot easier for us to all coexist, you know, because you're not trying to be a version of yourself that you want people to see. You're just being yourself. And I think that's the yeah, time that's... that uh, that that she, you know, was thriving in. And that's why she's so fresh. She's uh. She was definitely like a a really kind person, and a really uh a really good soul. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, her stories her her stories were amazing. Really. Like, yeah. That's Timothy Leary's like, story. Yeah, you know, like how that's so lucky to be able to have an experience like that for one, and then you know to keep it to yourself and just not exploit it. You know what I mean? And and just tell us about it. You know, it's like. It was really cool. It was really genuine. It was something that you don't get to hear every day. You know, you don't, not everybody got to chill with Timothy Leary, you know, like a lot of people did, but not everybody. Yeah. And, um, you know, and psh, that story was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the bear came to life and, <laughs> and then he turned to the devil or whatever, you know, like, yeah, that's man, scary. You know, I can relate. I've seen a lot of people trip like that. Mm hmm. So, uh, so yeah, that was really good. Hopefully, um, you know, some people out there got some insight into her life that you, uh, that you didn't know. And I think that we're going to need to have her on again to talk more about Pat because we didn't really get into that. But, you know, I wanted to, uh, yeah, I, I wanted to respect her as an artist and, you know, talk about her. We had her as a guest. So I think that's, I think that's what we did. And I think that it went really good. She, uh, she seemed really comfortable which is good. Us as hosts, we're supposed to make people comfortable. And uh, I think that we do a good job at that. So good job, Joey. Yeah, good job. It was fun, man. I, I was um, I was super impressed by everything she had to say. And I feel like I feel lucky that she took the time to come do it. And I feel like everybody who listens is lucky to get to experience this, the, the stories. You know what I mean? Like, it's um, not every day that you get to hear any stuff like that. So it's pretty cool for everybody. Yeah, that's very true. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please um, subscribe on iTunes. Leave us a comment and a rating. Or, um, you know, just uh, just be be fresh. Be fresh to somebody. That's all I ask. <laughs> Peace, bitches. The Natural Habitat Podcast.